In our last video, we showed you how to have the perfect 10 day trip to Cape Town. If you missed it, you can watch it here. In this video, we want to cover our favorite places to stay. We'll discuss the pros and cons of each. The area you choose to stay in can significantly affect your trip. So let's get started. We're going to start this video off with the Atlantic Seaboard, some of the most beautiful areas in Cape Town and where we currently live. The Atlantic Seaboard is located here on the western side of the city. As such, it is the best place to be if you like watching sunset, being close to the beach, going to cute cafes and getting active on the promenade. Since it's on the sunset side of the mountain, it is a lot warmer and the days truly feel a lot longer too. You'll see what we mean when we touch on some of the other areas later in the video. There are a number of suburbs which make up the Atlantic seaboard. Let's start with Sea Point, by far our favorite place and where we currently call home. The area has a lively atmosphere and a wide range of accommodation options from funky co-living spots, comfortable hotels, luxury hotels to Airbnbs. If you decide to stay in Sea Point, we highly recommend you spend time walking along Regent Road. There are some awesome cafes and restaurants as well as the famous Mojo Market. And of course, we can't forget the proximity to the promenade, probably our most favorite place in the whole of Cape Town. The Prom Prom stretches for several kilometers along the coast and offers stunning views of the ocean and the city. It's the perfect place to take a stroll, a jog, a cycle or a skate. Walking down the Prom, you'll really get a feel for the vibe and energy of the city. Sea Point is good for digital nomads, active people, basically it's got something for everyone. Cons of Sea Point and other places on the Atlantic seaboard are firstly noise pollution. You're right in the hustle and bustle, especially if you stay on Main and Beach Road. You can expect a lot of traffic noise even late at night, some loud bikes and the odd very noisy supercar go by. When booking a place in Seapoint, if you want a quieter environment, then look at booking higher up on the hill. It's very peaceful up there as long as you avoid places along high level road. That can be a bit noisy too. Seapoint is higher in pricing, but you're paying for location. Now for Greenpoint. This is Seapoint's sister area, also one of our faves. It's here where you'll find the stadium, many good restaurants and bars, the Greenpoint Park, and it's close distance to the VNA Promenade and CBD. You'll find slightly more affordable accommodation here, a few hostels and guest houses, and mid range hotels. This area is good for sports and concert goers, foodies, families, digi nomads, basically everyone. Again, Greenpoint can be a bit loud if you're situated right on the main road, but very quiet if you're just a bit further back on the hill. Right next to Seapoint, you'll find the suburbs of Fresne, Bantry Bay and Clifton. It's here where we often drive and picture the future we dream of. You'll find incredible villas, triple story mansions, condos and cliffside beachfront accommodation with sunset views to die for. Prices of stays here will most likely be the highest you'll find in the whole city, but you're paying for a prime location. Walking distance to the world-renowned White Sand Clifton beaches. One downside to staying in these areas though is that there aren't any cool cafes very nearby. You will need to drive to either Seapoint or Camps Bay for that. Also note that these areas are very hilly and full of stairs, making it a little harder to walk around and travel with big luggage. Moving further down the coast, we get to Camps Bay and Buckhoven, a perfect place to stay for those looking for a luxurious beachside experience. The area offers stunning views of the ocean and the Twelve Apostles and is home to some of the city's most upscale restaurants and accommodation options. From luxe villas to boutique hotels, you won't find many budget hotels or hostels in this area. One pro to staying here is its walkability. You will be able to walk to the nearby grocery store, the beach or a trendy restaurant pretty easily. There are some cons to staying in Camps Bay though. Number one, it can be very windy in the summer months as the wind pumps down the slopes of Table Mountain towards the ocean. It can also be very bright and hot in the afternoons too, so you will need to draw the blinds in your accommodation. Next is the traffic. To get in and out of Camps Bay can be a bit of a nightmare between the months of December and January and Ubers are also very difficult to come by, so be aware. And then finally, if you are near the main strip, it can be a little busy and loud. Buckhoven is right next to Camps Bay and is a premium neighborhood with some of our favorite beaches. You won't find any hotels here, it's mainly large villas up for rental on Airbnb. 
Now that the Atlantic seaboard is done, let's move our attention over to the V&A waterfront and foreshore areas. The V&A is the heart of the city for tourists. It's a bustling shopping and entertainment hub with a wide range of luxury hotels and self-catering apartments. It has stunning views of Table Mountain and is close to popular attractions like the Two Oceans Aquarium and the Cape Wheel. It's an ideal base for those who want to be in the middle of the action and have access to dozens of great restaurants and the shopping mall. Do note the pricing for places to stay here in this area are definitely on the higher end. Some areas even have a bit of a Monaco yacht life going on. Things to do in the area include a sunset cruise, Atlantic outlook kayaking, eat at the restaurants, take a boat trip from the harbour to Robben Island, take a helicopter tour of the city and explore the markets and museums. VNA is good for those that don't want to drive in the city, foodies and more mature travellers. The foreshore area is situated next to the VNA and on the border of the CBD. You can find hotels such as the Western, Southern Sun and Hotel Sky in this area. It is also really close to the International Convention Center and within walking distance to the VNA and the popular CBD streets of Brie and Loop, which are filled with amazing restaurants and cafes. Do note the vibe here is definitely more businessy, so it will be busy during the week, but it can feel like a bit of a dead zone on weekends. The CBD is next on the list, centrally located to basically all of the things to do that we've mentioned in this video and extremely walkable. We love the array of cafes and restaurants in the area, including the world-renowned Fane, which is ranked in the world's top 50 restaurants. The CBD is home to a number of budget apartments like our loft apartment here at Neighborgoods, many hostels and also luxury hotels like the Taj, Pepper Club Hotel and Spa and the Hyatt Regency. The most popular streets to stay in here are Brie and Loop. These streets are very vibey and filled with tons of different restaurants and cafes. Long Street is very popular too and is known as the party and bar street of the city. Now for the cons of staying in the CBD. Obviously it is very busy and as a result can be quite loud and overwhelming. It's definitely not the place to be if you're looking for a more relaxed time. Although the CBD is relatively safe during the day, you do need to be a bit more wary walking the streets late at night, but that does also apply to the whole of the city. The CBD's location can be a bit far from the beaches and some of the things to do. The traffic and jaywalking is pretty bad, so it can take quite a while to get in and out of the center. The amphitheater shaped City Bowl is next on the list. We're currently at Signal Hill and we have beautiful views of the whole bowl behind us. Within it, there are a number of really cool suburbs to stay in, such as Gardens, Tamboerskloof, Oranjesig, and Fredehoek. The CBD is also technically part of the City Bowl, but we've already covered that. It is a popular choice for tourists with its central location and easy access to attractions like Table Mountain, Signal Hill, Lion's Head, the vibey streets of Loop and Brie, and the V&A waterfront. Gardens is probably the most popular suburb in the City Bowl, with the restaurant and cafe filled Cliff Street being a focal point of the suburb. Accommodation options range from budget-friendly guest houses, some affordable hostels to homey Airbnbs. If you're looking for a more chilled, homey neighborhood vibe with the options of great shops and cafes, then Gardens is it. Cons to staying in Gardens and any of the surrounding neighborhoods is that they are surrounded by Devil's Peak, Table Mountain, Lion's Head and Signal Hill, meaning during the morning and afternoons, they can be a bit on the cooler side as they see less sun. The City Bowl is also about a 15 to 20 minute drive from the nearest beaches. If you love hiking though, they are perfectly located. We'll go over the other suburbs briefly. Fredehoek and Oranjesicht are located here at the foot of Table Mountain. They are quite suburban with a lot of parks, have great access to the mountain and stunning views over the entire city and Table Bay beyond. Do note, this is one of the most windy areas to stay in Cape Town, especially during the months of October to December. You won't find as many hotels or hostels in these areas. The main source of accommodation is going to be Airbnbs. Tamboos Cliff is on the opposite side of the bowl, offering stunning views of Table Mountain. You will have very easy access to hiking trails on Lion's Head and Signal Hill, as well as quick access to the city and the Cliff Street Cafe seen below. In terms of accommodation options here, you will find a lot of charming Victorian and Edwardian style houses with beautiful high ceilings and spacious living areas, apartments, townhouses and some guest houses too. Next to Tamboerskloof is Die Waterkant, known for its colorful houses and cobbled streets. Accommodation options here include guest houses, boutique hotels and large condo buildings. In terms of a location, it is connected pretty well to Greenpoint and Seapoint 
and is 10 to 15 minutes from the beaches. It is also bordering the vibey streets of Brie and Loop and within walking distance to the VNA waterfront. Cons of staying in the Vatican though are that some of the condo buildings, especially those along Strand Street, can suffer from quite a bit of noise and light pollution. The City Bowl is good for cafe lovers and foodies, hikers, budget travelers and more artsy people. Moving out of the city to the southern suburbs or the leafy suburbs as locals call them due to the range of trees growing in the area. Newlands, Claremont, Constantia and Bishop's Court are good for those looking for a quieter and more residential atmosphere. Newlands is known for its beautiful gardens and parks and is close to the Kirstenbosch Botanical Gardens, a stunning place to take a stroll or have a picnic. If you stay in Newlands, we can recommend you check out the Forester's Arms. It's the oldest pub in South Africa. Overall, the southern suburbs are a great location if you want to do some wine tasting at the Constantia Wine Estate, the oldest estate in the country. Explore the botanical gardens or do some hikes up the back of Table Mountain. We spent a couple weeks living in the southern suburbs and honestly it wasn't for us. We found it a bit too far from the beaches we love to frequent. It's also a lot cooler, the days are shorter due to being in the shadow of the mountain and it rains a hell of a lot more. It has a bit of a microclimate going on because it's on the windward side of the mountain. In terms of accommodation options, houses, apartments and flats are very common. So you'll find a lot of places at decent prices on Airbnb. You won't find many hotels or hostels in these areas. Further out of the city, there are a number of places to stay that we'll quickly mention. Hart Bay has a variety of options, is close to things to do such as the snorkeling with seals and the Chapman's Peak Drive. Landadno is a super luxe suburb with million dollar villas overlooking one of the most beautiful beaches in the country. Musenberg is a laid back surfer town with a range of affordable accommodation options including backpacker hostels and self catering apartments. The False Bay waters are also a lot warmer than those on the Atlantic seaboard. Other towns further down like Kalk Bay and Simonstown by Boulders Beach and the African Penguins are very cute and worth staying in and offer a very laid back and quiet environment full of nature -y things to do. It's close to the Cape Point Nature Reserve with the waters down here being some of the most crystal blue we've ever seen. Claire and I would love to retire here one day. 25 minutes up the coast from the city is Bloberg, a beach town with amazing views of Table Mountain and Lion's Head. Bloberg has some of the longest stretches of beach that is great for sunbathing, kite surfing, windsurfing and other water sports. We have stayed in Bloberg before and again, besides it being very windy at times, we found it a bit too far from all the main attractions going on in the city and Atlantic seaboard. Still, it's a good option if you're looking for a cost effective beach holiday, which still has decent access to the nearby Durbanville Hills wine estates. Then lastly, if being near the coast or city is not your vibe at all, we can recommend you look into staying in some of the renowned wine valleys such as Stellenbosch or Franschhoek. You will be able to find various guest houses, bed and breakfast and heritage hotels with that iconic Cape Dutch architecture. A lot of the wine estates have accommodation options too. There will also be a number of boutique hotels and self-catering cottages and villas. We highly recommend these two if you're looking for a more romantic escape or a wine tasting adventure in one of the most picturesque landscapes in South Africa. And that's it, we've covered all the places we think you should consider when planning a trip to Cape Town. Again, you can watch all of our other Cape Town videos for some amazing things to do and how to plan the perfect trip to the mother city. Grab our resource pack available on our website which has links to multiple accommodations, our favorite cafes and restaurants and so much more. We hope you found this helpful and if you did we'd appreciate if you gave it a like. It really helps more people discover the video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao!